Hey babes, it's Kayla Craft with the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. I'm a mom of three littles, ER nurse turned self-made millionaire and lifestyle entrepreneur. I'm bringing you stories, business and mindset tips to help you be shameless about pursuing your ambitions. Hey, Mommy Millionaires. I am so excited about today's special guest. Um, I've known him for a while now. I first met him at a mastermind and loved his vibe, loved everything that he was sharing to help people in business have more success. And ever since then, I had him at Mommy Millionaire Live and he came and he was a fan, a favorite at the event. So I was like, we got to have you on the podcast. So he came up from San Diego this morning and he's actually going on a snowboarding trip with Chase later today. The owner and founder of Organifi and the founder of Fit Life TV. So you guys get excited because we have Drew Cannoli on the show today. Yay, so welcome. Uh, thank you so much for having me on, Kayla. I'm I so excited. And uh, coming to your event, I'm kind of like a fanboy now. Yeah, that's... Being at your event and seeing all the women there and, and how much they were learning and how much love was in the room, it was absolutely incredible. Yeah. So thanks for having me back on and I'm excited to rock this out. Okay, so I always like to get started with the story because yes. people heard all of the accolades, right? Yeah. And they're like, okay, how did he get here with this cool hat and yeah. everything? Look and fly. Thank you. So how, how did this all happen? Were you, did you always know you were going to be in health and wellness? No, not at all. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do for like the first 20 odd years of my life. And I was very confused. Yeah. Because I was born into the world and I was tortured as a kid. So physically abused. If I couldn't tie my shoes fast enough, my dad would put cigarettes out on my forehead and he would hold my head underneath the water in the bathtub. And it was horrendous. Like no father should do that to their son. No, it's horrible. Um, so I, I actually had a lot of trauma and I stored that in my body, my subconscious mind, my body, uh, my whole life. Right. And then I had to work through that. So there was a lot of needing to be approved. Um, people, what is it? People pleasing. Yes. Yeah. There was a lot of I uh, couldn't make my own decisions for a while because I was just so stuck in that. Did you realize that you were like really kind of experiencing like post-traumatic stress yeah. or were you just like stuffing a lot of that stuff down? I was uh, stuffing a lot of it down and I was faking it till I make it, right? Mm -hmm. That was my big thing, mm -hmm. act as if. And I, when I was 15, I really started studying uh, thought, you know, the new thought movement, um, I started studying Ralph Waldo Emerson, Neville How Goddard. did I did that in high school too. Yeah. How were you introduced to that? Um, God, mentors, just miraculous. It, like this, knowing that I had, like I believe that I came here with this uh, desire to seek what's in the invisible field versus the 3D. So I was always looking in weird stuff. My mom used to crap up. <laughs> crap up. <laughs> my mom used to crack up. Uh, my adopted mom, who has the biggest heart in the world, she would take me to the library. And most kids, you know, they're reading Dr. Seuss at like the age of five and six. Yeah. And I'm pulling up full, full on books, like exp explaining like ancient Egypt and like hermetic teachings. And she's Aww. like, what is going on with this child? <laughs> so I was a little, little weird, little woo woo. How old were you when you were adopted by her? Uh, five years old. Okay. Yeah. How did they find you? So we were in foster care for a year or two. So we were bouncing around from homes to homes and uh, then we were adopted at mm -hmm. that point. And I don't, I don't tell these stories to like get sympathy or emotion towards yeah. that. It's more of, uh, I can, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Right. Right. Like the success and everything that we've generated is I wouldn't be where I am today without it. So in some ways I look at trauma as fuel. I look at it as kind of like the life force that's inside of us waiting to come out. So. One of the things that really inspires me about you is um, the first time I met you, you shared that the story about your dad and how you ended up writing a letter to him and forgiving him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I believe I was 27 and okay. I wrote my dad a letter. First of all, forgiving him. And then second to that, thanking him. What made you get into life. that that space to be able to do that? Yeah, I had just completed Landmark. Oh, yeah, okay. So. so for those of you guys that don't know what that is, it's like a personal development yeah. Personal development. Seminar. Yeah, seminar, forum, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And it was my first time with uh, the S teachings from the 70s, you know, what they created. And it blew my mind. So I was like, you know what? I can write this, this guy, mm -hmm. this man, a letter and forgive him and thank him. And I forgave him at a really young age. When I was six, I was praying one night 
and I was praying for the gerbils and the hamsters and the different Aww. pets we had as kids. <laughs> and then I prayed God to forgive my dad, you know, mm-hmm. my biological father. And I felt that release yeah. in my life. Isn't that weird how you can feel the physical release leave yeah. your body when you forgive somebody? Yeah. That's so special. So forgiveness was key. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, I think a lot of mommy millionaires hold on to a lot of like bitterness and resentment yeah. towards people that have maybe done them wrong or whatever. So I think it's important to forgive and have that gratitude aspect too. 100%. Like Because that situation really made you become mm-hmm. who you are today. So I love that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so you're at 27. You write the letter to your dad. Yeah. Where are you at like financially and career-wise this so, time? Because my ego was so huge and I wanted to the world to see how cool I was because as a little boy, I wasn't, you know, I was abused, whatever. I started a few different companies and it was very much how much money can I make? Yeah. What can I create for me? And I was stuck in that. So I wasn't happy doing it. I was running a credit and debt settlement company. I was making, you know, half a million dollars a year, which is pretty good money back then. And I wasn't happy every weekend, say back then. <laughs> every weekend I would go out and I would get smashed. I would mm-hmm. drink copious amounts of alcohol. I would uh, partake in different kinds of drugs and whatnot because I was trying to find myself in losing myself mm-hmm. in something external, something outside of me. Mm-hmm. And it felt like home in those moments. And wow. the more I did it, the further I went down that path, the more lost I became. And then I met a mentor when I was 29 and it completely transformed my life because I would meet with this man every morning and I would meet with him. How did you meet him? Um, through, so I've had just, I've kind of had lotto tickets in my life where you just win the lotto with the people that you meet. And I make lists of the qualities and the ways of being that I want in like mentors and coaches. Yes, yeah. I write it all down and then I just let it go. I'm detached from it and I know that it's already there. So it's about knowing that it's already there and then it shows up. So, so you were doing this even in your like lost state. You're like, yeah. I wish somebody would come into my life like yeah. this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was still reaching. I was still seeking. Mm-hmm. I've always been a seeker. Okay. So I made, That's this, important. I made this list and um, sure enough, this guy walks into Panera Bread. Well, long, okay, so I'll tell you the story. Because I we like stories I was at Mommy Millionaire this credit and debt settlement company, okay. and I wasn't a marketer at the time, so I'm like, you know what? Everybody has to use the bathroom. So I put two and two together. I'm like, if I put billboards in the bathroom, you, you've probably seen them in the stalls. Yeah, totally. So I put my credit and debt settlement company billboards. I spent thousands of dollars on this because I'm like, this is gonna be the biggest win. Like people, <laughs> people are, gonna are be sitting there. The journal. <laughs> This is how much I didn't know about marketing. Oh my God. So I got no phone calls in this, but I got one call from one man who was like, you know what? I need help with my credit. Mm -hmm. And I decided to meet this guy at Panera Bread and he came in speaking a completely different language. He looked like he had just stepped off a yacht, this guy, and his wealth frequency was so high. And he was one of the former owners of Dollar Rent-A-Car. Oh, wow. And I'm like, okay, well, this guy needs help with his credit. I'm like, I'm going to help you out for free. Like, I don't care because basically on a 30 minute call, everything that I wrote down for a mentor that I wanted to attract was on that list. Wow. And then I, I met with him once a week for like two years. Wow. And he introduced me to another mentor who was life changing. He was like a father for me. Mm-hmm. This 89 year old sage, his name's Frank. Oh. And he would just light me up every day. He's like, this is what you need to be focused on. If, if you, um, you want to be happy in your life, you got to focus on giving and not receiving and not getting anything back for it, but mm-hmm. just to give for the sake of giving. So how, how, when I think a lot of people want mentors, right. Yeah. And maybe good people are in their lives right now, but they don't really know how to like work with a mentor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what would be your advice on that? Um, I think it's taking the internal stock. Am I coachable? Asking yourself those questions. Am I good at receiving feedback? And how does somebody know if they're coachable? Because I think some people think they're coachable. Yeah. But if they're that person that likes to answer with I know, then they're usually not. That's a good question. (laughs) I've never been asked that question, but I think it's the listening. How good are you at listening? Are you listening with your mind? Because the mind has 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Or are you listening full body? Am I listening from the point of... Um, I have nothing to say afterwards. Right. Oftentimes we formulate sentences in our mind and we want to show the person how smart we are or whatever else. How good can I listen? And then can I take the action from it? Am I going to apply it in my life and really move forward with the listening to the listening or listening with your whole body? 
Oh, so. I like that. Listening with your whole body. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's good. So you got this mentor yep. and he's teaching you to give more than you take, basically. Yeah, and, and I knew that because I had studied Think and Grow Rich. I had read all the books, yeah. The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace I Wallace. love that book, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, he wrote The Science of Being too, which was good. Ooh, I haven't read that and, one. And um, so I, I knew it conceptually, but I never listened to it. It's like, I gotta go out and work hard every day and make X amount of money just so I can support me. And mm -hmm. if you look at spiral dynamics or any of Ken Wilber's work, that's very orange, which is where on the spiral dynamics, that's where the vast majority of society yeah, is today, no which is the competitive plane, right? So okay. people are competing for resources. Yes. They're drawing boundaries from one another. They're separate. And that's the world where I was, I wanted to leave that world. Mm -hmm. I wanted to move up the spiral dynamics and in my own life with my own evolution and just work without having to work and create without having to have competition, right? Cooperation. Mm -hmm. What can I do for other people versus what can I receive from other people? Mm. How much can I give every single day? And when I started living that way, my life completely changed. What, what, what changed? First of all, my attitude. Okay. Cause there was a lot of tasks as an entrepreneur that we don't like to do. D yeah, so totally. I, I remember one point and um, I was a bar back at this bar. Okay. And I was bar. Which bar? It was in Michigan. Oh, okay. Not around here. Not in California. Oh, it was one of those bars in the it Midwest. Was a small bar <laughs> in Michigan. And I remember I had to mop the floor. And at the time I felt so like this, why am I doing this? Like this job's below me, all this other stuff. But I learned a lesson because as an entrepreneur, there's sometimes we have to do those things yeah. in our business. And if you can have a positive attitude in that, if you can bring yourself to almost a complete state of rapture because the people that get to walk on the floor, you're actually serving them. And if you can have like this whole experience, mm -hmm. then there's nothing that's outside of what you won't do. And as an entrepreneur, that's super powerful. Mm. So I took that lesson and I applied it in my life. And uh, at the beginning of Fit Life TV, I was editing my own videos. I mean, we got boss man here. Yeah, um, I was you know, writing my own copy. I was developing my own websites and everything that entrepreneurs do. And if I would have had the attitude like, hey, this isn't me, then we wouldn't be where we are today. Right. So sometimes we have to throw ourselves into the lion's den or the fire and do what we don't want to do to get the results that most people don't have or whatever the meme is that's going around Instagram, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Okay. So you start Fit Life TV to serve people, yeah. to help people get Just healthy. To give. Right? Yeah. Okay. And is that when you're, are you a bar back at this time too, to make money? Or are you still doing a credit? So I, this is another, I have these crazy I have like, the, yeah, I need to understand it all. <laughs> yeah. I have these crazy stories. I was in Tampa of all places. Okay. Right. Michigan to Tampa. Been to Tampa. I've been to Tampa. You gave me the look like, oh God, this guy lived in Tampa. Well, I went there just for a little bit to watch them, the national championship game. Yeah. Like years ago. Oh, nice. So I'm in Tampa Okay. and, um, I had, I launched this company and it was doing well and I wanted to create X amount of money so that I could validate it in my mind that everything was okay and I could move to California. Oh, so I okay. wrote a check to myself. I wanted to make X amount of money. I think it was like 60 grand or 70 grand, something like that. And uh, I wanted to make this somehow, some way. It had to come from a different source, like outside of my company okay. to show me from the universe that it was actually on the way. Oh. So I went to Bayshore Boulevard, which is right in Tampa, and I meditated and I was just like seeing the money come in and I was listening to the waves like wash over me, like the money's coming in and I'm doing this mantra, I'm doing this meditation and then I just let it go. And then within, it was about I think 12 days, I woke up in the morning and I had all these emails from 997 made, 997, 997, so a thousand bucks on all these. And I counted up, there was $67,000 in there. And it was from a course that I had created to help people do loan modifications in their houses. Wow. That was sold like, uh, you know, what would it be, 10 years now? Yeah. Okay. And one of these affiliate marketers picked it up and just promoted it to their list out of nowhere. Right? So this money just came in and it was a sign from the universe that, you know what, I took it as that. I need to move to California. I'm like, thank you, God. I got the message and I was listening. So I moved to California then. And I uh, went from Tampa to San Diego, didn't know anybody. I gave up my environment, which is the first level in DILT's uh, neurological, you know, um, NLP, neurological levels. Mm -hmm. It's called environment's the first one. 
So if you can change your environment, your environment of the people around you, your environment of your mm -hmm. place, your environment of your mind, and then you can move up to capabilities, ways of being, and then identity and then purpose. That's the ascension path for shifting who you are or transformation. Okay. So should everybody just pick up and move somewhere random right now? You don't have to do that. <laughs> and if you have kids, it's probably going to be a little bit harder. What should they so, do? Um, first and foremost, I, I saw a video in, in this, but about 13 years ago, I started making my bed every day. And I know they're probably doing that now, but making sure like the first thing you do is make your bed because you're building up momentum for the day. Uh, cleaning the closet, like making sure if you had to travel somewhere, you could have all your clothes ready in five minutes. Okay. Right. You have to almost become almost like a little lunatic. We all are, right? Yeah. Making sure the kitchen is like so organized and dialed in because that's going to pour into your business. And then it comes to the money um, in the business, which we, we run Profit First, which is a good book that we, I've read that changes book the before, environment yeah. of your finances. Mm -hmm. I think I read that book because you told me to read really? that book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So setting up your bank accounts that way with your business and everything else is helpful. Okay. And, um, so change the little things that the you can things. control yeah. if you can't take like big massive action. you can't action. move to a different country or yeah. a different state, something like that. Yeah. Change the little things. Okay. So you start to change your environment. You come to California yeah. and Fit Life TV is still moving and shaking at so this point? Fit, no, I started Fit Life TV in California. In California. And it took okay. six months. I didn't make any money. Okay. Right. Because that was the commitment that I had. I'm not, I don't care about You're living money. off of I'm this just course build money. A community. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I did. So every day I shot a video and I posted it on YouTube. I was like the OG influencer on YouTube back in the day. Yeah. And it, when I started off, it was like gangbusters. So I made my first <laughs> video, uploaded it on one of those HD flip cams. Yeah. Got 12 views. I thought I was hot shit. I'm like, 12 views. I'm yeah. killing it, right? And then the next day I still had 12 views. And I sent it to my dad. I'm like, dad, you got to watch this video. Like I remember very specifically, like I, I'm still stuck at 12. And, uh, but tenacity. What did your dad say? He just laughed. I mean, he's like, all right, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Like yeah. he wanted me to be a pharmaceutical sales rep. Oh, so what was he? Uh, truck driver. Oh, and my mom's a janitor. Okay. Right. So they didn't come from the wealth, the highest wealth frequency. They didn't really get the money thing mm -hmm. at a young age. So I had all that going for me as well. When, okay, when you talk about wealth frequencies, I think that's new to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, so there's, I'll use the analogy every day. There's Starbucks yep. that we go to, right, to get coffee. And there's also the Ritz Carlton. Mm. When you go in each one of these places, the energy is different. Yes. Right, very different. The coffee's different. Actually, the coffee's probably the same, right? Starbucks, Ritz Carlton, maybe not. They'd probably argue with me. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it tastes very similar. But what you're paying for is the frequency, yeah. the energy that's there. The ambiance there, yeah. And certain people have this frequency mm -hmm. when you're around them and you feel it. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, this person's operating in a different level. And I need to know what that level is. So that's kind of the vibration that you emit, frequency. Okay. Low woo woo. Yeah, no, we talk about vibes and stuff all the time, Good. but I just wanted you to explain it to them a little bit more. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're doing Fit Life TV and you're starting to make money after like six months. Is that what happens? Well, yeah, it was hard in the beginning. And there was a lot of ups and downs. There was There's still ups and I downs, was just right? Making content yeah. nonstop, giving, giving, giving as much as I could and trying to figure out how to make money. So were you giving, like, thinking, like, okay, this is the avatar that I'm giving to? Or were you just like, this is what I'm... I didn't even have that at the time. Yeah, okay. The avatar was forming itself based on the content that I was creating. And so I filmed videos every day. And then I ended up selling, like, a $37 ebook, And I created my first marketing funnel, which was the Alpha Reset back in the day, which has had millions of downloads. But it was a seven-day juice cleanse Okay. way back in the day. So fasting, intermittent fasting, I explained all that. This was like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. like how to do all this stuff and how to make your own juices, how to ferment your own foods. I was going ham on like basically. But this was all stuff that you were interested in, right? I so, loved it. Yeah. 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 It was I a passion. Avatar. Yeah. My, my team makes fun of me all the time. I'm like that 45 year old woman in the kitchen <laughs> making food and like people come over in to your my garden. House. I'm like the Italian mom Aww. You know, yeah. in my garden all the time. Yeah. And uh, those are things that I enjoy naturally. Yeah. So I was doing that. And I was attracting my avatar back into my experience for that, which was cool. Okay. So how, I think a lot of people like 
are wanting to do something like that, right? They're yeah. wanting to put content out there and people overthink it so much. Like, what should I put out there? And your thing is like, well, what can you give to the world? Is yeah, that- what can you give starting with that premise? Mm-hmm. And then also how, how much fun can you have? Doing? Yes. So every day, how much fun can I have? Why is it important to like ask yourself that question? That's a question I'm asking myself lately. Yeah, because you're going to work one third of your life. Mm -hmm. And if you're working, you want it to be what I like to call workation. So you're transmitting a vacation vibration. It's very high vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're just having fun. It's not work at all. And when it goes, because things do go south every once in a while. And you want to laugh it off. And if you're on vacation, it's funny because you're, you know, at an exotic destination or wherever you are. But you can be at that vacation in your mind. So maintaining that and being there often and allowing yourself to go to that, as Neville Goddard would say, the room of wishful thinking. Mm. So what does that look like? And then bringing the characters, the music, the movie, because you're in creation of your own reality. Right. And from the outside looking in as the director, we can change basically this little actor that we call Drew, the personality of Drew. There's something so much bigger going on outside of that. And there's something so much bigger outside of Kayla that's just kind of orchestrating your life. And when you can enter your, the matrix, you know, when you come in it from that place, uh, there's a lot less stress. There's more fun. There's more ease. There's this continual, um, unfoldment of good. Uh, okay. So I read in a book that exactly what you said about the vacation thing. Yeah. I can't remember what book it was, but it was talking about how like you, this life is a vacation. And so if you could treat it as such, you wouldn't take things so seriously. So true. So true. You just like laugh it off. But it's so like, I know from my like personal experience and I know mommy millionaires listening in because they're a lot like me, right? It's like in the moment, it feels so big and catastrophic when things do go south. So what's like a mantra you do? Is it that you just go in your mind and you're like, you just have this like little mind movie? So that's a good question. And I think- I'm full of good questions today. I think it's so fascinating. You know, if you look back at, one thing that I believe is that we've been around a lot longer than some people think. Um, and there's no right or wrong. Like, do we really know? Who knows? But let's this, say it's what earth, you choose the, to believe yeah, on your the vacation. Earth has been in existence for about 13.5 billion years. And I know that I see less than 0.000012% of the light field that's in front of me with these eyes. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, maybe I'll live to be 150 because I'm doing NAD and I'm biohacking. and I'm I want to do that things, since you've been right? posting about that. Yeah. So 150 years out of 13.5, 14 billion years. It's such a small, 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 like minimus experience. And I'm getting that, right? I'm downloading it. I'm seeing it. So at the end of the day, how much do I really know based on the reality of the whole? The reality of the whole is absolutely massive. It's infinite. It's ever expanding. Right? Yeah, totally. So am I going to go outside right now and look up at Mars and have a problem with Mars? No, it's not your problem. Yeah, it's not my problem. Am I going to look at the sky and see Jupiter and be like, Jupiter, what the hell? Like, you're not shining as bright as you were supposed to. Yeah. It's so funny to me as human beings how we pick apart our life Mm -hmm. and we turn it into the biggest problem ever. When it's actually so small in reality. When we're so small, right? Mm -hmm. when it's so little, like, and one thing I do is I future project myself to, to like 10, 20 years. You guys probably do this. Yes, totally. Right. Where all the time, that's all I'm doing. Where maybe something bad happens and then it's like, okay, in five years is going to matter and 10 years is going to matter. 20 years Mm -hmm. on my deathbed. Am I really going to be thinking about, uh, this incident? Maybe I got a ticket in traffic or whatever. Am I going to be thinking about that? Probably not. Right. But it's taking joy from me now. Mm Mm-hmm. And I believe when we get to a place after we, you know, ascend or we go to the pearly gates, whatever your belief system is, I think God is really going to be not judging us like based on what we did wrong, but really like, Hey, these are all the moments in your life that you chose to gave up your, you gave up your joy. And this is all the joy that you could have had. Oh, so how much joy can you experience? Right. How much love can you experience? So think about that. How did you come to that conclusion? Um, Like, why do you think that? Does it just make you feel good to think that? Well, I think there's been times where I've judged myself. I'm my worst critic, of course. Right. I am too. Mm -hmm. So I'm beating myself up a lot. And you get to a point when it's just like, all right, what is all this for? Why am I doing this? Who am I? Mm -hmm. Who is the real me? 
And uh, then, then we're able to let go of the personal vehicle that we call, we put so much time and attention into these 3D meat suits, as I like to call them. I know, I remember that from yeah. and, uh, <laughs> Mommy Millionaire Live, your meat suit. Yeah, and it's the biggest <laughs> limitation we have, I think, our five senses. Okay, so talk about that a little more. Oh my God, we're getting crazy today. I love it, because yeah. it's like <gasps> fascinating. Yeah, I think, I think when, it's gonna be very new for a lot of people. Yeah, so the five senses are so real. You know, sight, sense, see, like smell, all this other Touch, stuff. Touch, yeah. And outside of that, there's, I believe, much more for us as human beings right now. Mm. I think there's a shift that's happening. I think more people are waking up. I think that's true too. Yeah. So when we wake up, we get access to, let's call it 52 other senses that we didn't know we had as human beings. And the more we wake up, the more we give, the more we allow ourselves to help other people, the less we think about the personal us. The personal mind that has 80,000 thoughts a day, most of them are destructive. And we can bring, as um, one of my mentors has told me, we can bring our first attention, which is what we think about us, Kayla's mind, into the second attention, which is the infinite mind or the divine mind or Christ consciousness, if we want to call it. And then from that place, I believe there's much more for us. And the world needs more people that are coming from this place than so much personality. Is that like um, the bracelet I used to wear when I was a kid, WWJD? Is that, is that Christ consciousness? Yeah, like, what yeah, would Jesus yeah, yeah. do? That In was... this situation, he would send love. He wouldn't hate. Exactly. He wouldn't... What would JD do? What would Jesus do? That was such a great bracelet. I, yeah, I, I had multiple to... colors. I bracelet. would send them to all of my friends and yeah. stuff. Yeah. That was powerful. But and I think then... it's still powerful today. Like, you could even, no matter what you believe, like, if... Yeah. I used to like send out WWJD bracelets to all my friends yes. when I was growing up. And I still do like live from that place because I think all of us, no matter what religion you believe in, can really benefit from living yeah. in a place of sending love and no judgment um, because you're just so much happier there. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Well, I know you know that. Well, I love Jesus. Yeah. And he is so close to my heart. Everywhere I go, I think of Jesus. And I... Um, I had this line my whole life. You can kind of see it on my hand. Yeah. The first one. Oddly enough, two years ago, I was playing virtual reality. And, you know, you put the goggles yeah. on. And I'm finishing the highest level. I'm playing the I'm total. I, I'm not a big gamer, but every once in a while, if I do play a game, I'm going to beat it. Just because I'm so <laughs> You're competitive. competitive yeah. right? So I'm final level of this game and I swing up and I hit the table and I wrap it up. There's blood everywhere. It's a white stand-up desk in my garage, right? I have the HTC everything there's blood everywhere oh my gosh and then i wrap this up and then two weeks later i pull it off and there's the perfect cross. oh my gosh isn't that crazy that is crazy i know so the cross has always followed me wow i love that story yeah that's amazing okay so let's get into business a little bit because there's yes. a lot of mommy millionaires that are like if i had drew's brain i would be extremely successful right yeah so there's um, like online influencers, maybe people that want to become authors. Yeah. And I think for you, you've had struggles in growing Organifi, right? You've had, and with FitLife TV. Absolutely. So what have you done to make this massive, I mean, it's a nine figure company in mm -hmm. how long? I mean, it's been five years? Five years. Five years. And I love Organifi, you guys. And if you want to check out some green juice, I just had my green juice this morning. Yes. And I also have my Organifi Gold. It's like this yummy turmeric drink that I drink at night. If you guys want to check it out, you guys can go to Organifi and use code MOMMY to yep. get 15% off. Mommy. And help Drew out. You know, M-O-M-M-Y. Okay? Yeah, 15% yeah. off for the yeah. fam. Yeah, it's so good. People are obsessed with it. Yeah, the gold is phenomenal. Chocolate gold as well. I haven't tried chocolate gold. Oh my God, you got to try chocolate gold. That's next level. <laughs> I need to get some. Yeah. I need to get some. Okay, so you're growing Organifi. You yeah. have this idea you, you want to get juice like easily into people's yeah. hands. So you're like, let me do it in a greens powder. Yep, which ties to the environment. Right? If you can change your internal microbiota, if you can change the beneficial bacteria through mm -hmm. certain adaptogenic compounds and Chinese traditional mushrooms and you know the cruciferous greens that we put in there along with the corral and the spirulina and all the adaptogens and the superfoods, so you yummy. start to shift from the inside. And if you can shift, the 90% of the serotonin actually comes from your gut to your brain, right. which is the happy hormone, right? Happy chemical. We all need more of that. Yeah. So the better we feel here, the mm -hmm. better we're going to feel here. And we are that, um, the projection, the machine that's the projection 
perceiving creates the reception, mm -hmm. so the reality. So my goal was just to have people feel better. What can I make that's convenient, that's easy, doesn't take a lot of time, that just helps people feel better. And if I they started, don't change anything else in their life, if they just ingested these greens. Yeah, you don't change anything else. Yeah. You just do it every day. Eventually, when you're drinking it, you're telling yourself by that action that you're a healthy person. Yes. So the more I tell myself I'm a healthy person every single day I'm drinking this, over 30 to 60 to 90 days, I'm making healthier choices. I'm not eating this, the cheesecake after dessert or waking up in the middle of the night to crush a whole sleeve of Oreos. Right. Yeah, you just stop buying the Oreos. I literally, <laughs> I'm not buying the Oreos. All of a sudden, I'm shopping in the organic food section, yep. smelling like patchouli, talking about electromagnetic <laughs> frequencies, and I've gone off the deep end, but uh, <laughs> you feel better. Right. And when you feel better, you become a magnet for success, for totally. business, for other people. People want to work with you because mm -hmm. you're emanating a different frequency. So it's so important to put your health first. 100%. You have to. Because Steve Jobs, you know, had all the money in the world, but his health Mm -hmm. um, he did. It. So, and there's so many of those stories that are out there for us today. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So if anybody can just change one thing, just yeah. drink those greens in the morning. Yeah. Drink the greens, get a workout in, take a walk outside, look up at the sky, look at the sun, mm -hmm. enjoy mother earth. Then eventually get you'll get a ground. sauna and a cold plunge like Drew yeah. has. <laughs> there's deeper levels. Uh, and I'm, I'm like a little fruit bat at the very beginning of my journey. So eventually I, I can only imagine what I'll be doing. I love how in your book, you talk about a three day protocol with, yes. you know, you start off, you wake up in the morning and you have warm lemon water. Mm -hmm. Why is that important to have that warm lemon water first thing in the morning? Cause the, you're breaking a fast in okay. the morning and you're chronically dehydrated. Usually most people are in a dehydrated state naturally. Mm -hmm. So if we can mineralize and we can alkalize first thing in the morning, we're going to have, we're going to hydrolyze our bodies and we're going to have more energy. So I'm all about energy. I want yeah. to be super focused and present for the people that I love all day. Have that mental clarity. Hydration is so key. Okay. So warm water and lemon, maybe a little apple cider vinegar. In there. Yeah. You talked about that too with the mother. Yeah. Have it be with the mother. You gotta have the mother. I'm like, I don't know what that means, but get, get the one with the, the mother. The mother is the real slimy looking thing <laughs> yeah. that's in there that sometimes gets stuck in your teeth. And you see medical nice. medium says no on apple cider vinegar. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But he also says celery juice. Yeah, he says celery juice. And there's so many bioconstituents and other enzymes and aminos that are in greens and ginger and ancient adaptogens like turmeric that are, I think, even more beneficial than celery juice. I just offended like 40 million people right there because celery juice is like it's the biggest okay. craze. It's okay. Um, I think it's good to have different opinions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it works for a lot of people, right? Yeah. And then green powder works for a lot of people too. It works because it's easy. Right. Like Organifi. Right. You just put it in, you mix it up. And celery that's like. Celery juice is just one thing. You just celery. The majority of the population is going to be, it, the greens powder mixed with water is way simpler yes. to follow, right? 100%. Okay. So you're growing Organifi. What is like the biggest like setback you would say? Like what people would call a setback. I know you probably wouldn't call it, but what is yeah. something like you experienced where it could have like basically destroyed the whole company. Yeah. I mean, we're going through it right now. Wow. Yeah. We're in it and it's beautiful. So we got asked politely to leave Facebook. <gasps> yeah. And we were spending about a hundred grand a day <gasps> on Facebook. Wait, okay. Facebook ads. What? Yeah. I remember you talking about this at the light. They turned off your ads or something. Yeah. Okay. Can we talk about this? Yeah. Why are they, what, what's going on? Well, like, it's, um, 50,000 companies got asked to leave. <gasps> I Why? Think, I think it's probably because uh, the political race is running and the government has its eyes more on Facebook today. So the moral of the story is don't put all your traffic in one place. Yes. So we've diversified. Luckily, we were on YouTube before this all happened. Um, we had, you know, we're in about 2,500 stores. We have an arsenal of uh, influencers and affiliates all over the world that love Organifi and... Mm -hmm podcasts we sponsor. So there's a lot of other traffic sources that we had. Right. Had we been so focused on Facebook, like a lot of other companies, yes. our business would have went to the wayside. So, wow. Yeah. So what is like your plan? Well, the, the plan would be, let's get back on Facebook first and foremost. So we're doing everything we can and showing them that we're actually, because what they see is a, a superfood supplement company. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of, unfortunately, there's a lot of bad companies that are out there that put sawdust in their pills 
and get stuff from China and they sell it for. And how do people like, know this? Because I, I mean, I've been in the health and wellness supplement field for 10 years. And yeah. so like there is, I'm always like, don't go get your stuff on Amazon. You can get Organifi on Amazon though. Yeah. It's good. It's yeah. good on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of stuff, like they'll just see an ad and they're like, oh, I'm going to go get this. And it's yeah. kind of like you're putting more junk in your you body. It's you so want, scary. Yeah. So you want to make sure it's GMP certified. You want to make sure what I think, I still think there's a lot of validity to obviously it being organic. There's a lot of pesticides, herbicides, fungicides that are actually in the soil of these other supplements and products. So sometimes it can be reverse beneficial if you're taking pills every day. And many of them actually have lead, arsenic. Different As I'm taking 80 China. pills a day As for you my... Don't, you don't know. So unless you're doing, I have a phlebotomist come in my house every month, okay. once a month. So they draw blood and I'm looking at about probably 60 different parameters every month. And I'm measuring different supplements. I'm in it. Like I'm in the weeds with this stuff, right? I'm also sending out Organifi to 12 different testing facilities. We're looking at heavy metal, uh, which we just got removed on everything, which even Prop 65 in California, yeah. a garden salad would have to say, hey, yeah, like you could get this or walking in this building, Prop 65, you could get cancer or right. whatever else. So getting rid of that has been key for us. And so you uh, got rid of it completely. Yeah. And, <gasps> and <laughs> we're one of the first superfoods that actually got glyphosate free, which glyphosate's hard to get rid of in our environment today. Okay. I'm saying glyphosate. I always say the wrong I was word. like, what is, what is glyphosate. that? Glyphosate. Glyphosate. Let me myself. Glyphosate. So my Michigan accent comes across sometimes. It's okay. Glyphosate. Okay. And That's that so cool. is one of the chemicals, the herbicides, the fungicides, the pesticides. It's a form of, um, it's an antibiotic that we use to keep pests off plants. But if you're putting this on the crops that you're actually consuming, you're basically in small amounts drinking antibiotics every day. And we know that antibiotics in the gut disrupt your micro gut biome, right? Mm -hmm. So oftentimes people are consuming this healthy uh, stuff. glyphosate. They think it's healthy mm -hmm. and it's actually the opposite of that. So you have to be real careful. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. So, so GMP things. certified. Yep. Make sure the plant is GMP because they, they do the practices that are good. USD organic, uh, glyphosate free. You don't okay. want glyphosate in there. And, um, those are the three big ones. Okay. I would say. All right. Or you could just order Organifi. Yeah. My favorite is the chocolate shake. Yeah. Yeah. The protein. Yeah. So good. So good. Okay. Yeah. I'm working on a cereal. Can we talk about that? Because I'm really excited about that. I didn't know if we that was on the hush hush. It. It's on the hush hush. <sighs> All right. But just know. But that the mommy millionaires know it's coming. Yeah. The mom, you're going to be the first people. Like the mommy millionaires, like the kids. The reason this is being created is for the kids. Well, there's so much stuff. Like my kids are the pickiest eaters. Yeah. Now Cooper will drink green juice, but like my other kids will not touch anything healthy. Yeah. It's really frustrating. So they're going to love this. I'm so excited. I, I love it. I've been eating it and I'm always, I'm at the first. I feel like I should get like an extra, like a special batch. Before? Okay. Yes. We'll, we'll I do, should be on that list. We'll put unicorns and some glitter in there for you or something. <laughs> That'd be beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So you're going through this biggest setback right now and you're just, how well, are you? I'm not going to say that. It's not a setback. Because right? nothing is a setback. Nothing is a setback. It's a setup. It's, it's, set it's a leveling up. This is the best thing that could happen to us. And I'll keep saying that over and over and over again. Did you so, feel like that when it first happened? Uh, for about 20 seconds? No, but I've trained myself Yeah. to switch the program quickly. Because okay. the faster we can change the reality of it in our mind, the faster the reality changes in the external world. Mm -hmm. So I'm all about it. So now anybody talks about it in a meeting in a detrimental way or like something that's not favorable, I'm like correcting them as the visionary. Okay, we can't use that language. So like that I, language has to go. I think that's so important. And you take on the role um, in Organifi as the visionary, right? Don't you call yourself like the chief fun officers or chief? What are you? Yeah, I don't really have a title. Okay. Because you have other people that are running it for yeah. you and you come in and get people. I see you doing like some crazy stuff at your team I'm meetings. I'm just the energy guy. Yeah. You know, I come in and I light people up and I go deep with them. And I have so you're working on mentoring and coaching the people yeah, on mentoring your mentoring and coaching and doing what I do. Do you still take people on dates? Like you would take them on like day Absolutely. dates to do something fun. Talk about that. Cause I think that's really important as people, yeah. mommy millionaires are building their team out. Like why yeah. is that important to do that? So recently we went and did group VR. I saw that's virtual reality. Yeah. yeah. This is like my second time doing this. And we're in a simulation where the, you're in a green screen room, but you have six people 
and you're all you all have guns and you're like shooting zombies and it's the apocalypse so is this down in san diego <laughs> yeah okay and they have it in anaheim they have it in la it's all okay. over now right okay so we're playing this and it's so cool because you get to see how people are outside of work yeah and you're just hanging out with them and yeah I, I love every single person on my team and one of the things we do is we screen culture so the culture interview is the first interview because if i'm not going to hang out with you outside of work then um you know why are we going to work together yeah, because so you spend so much time working. Fit. Yeah, yeah, there has to be a fit. And everybody organify. They have a certain energy, this childlike enthusiasm, this joy in their heart. And it's so cool, which is probably why we've been voted one of the best places to work a couple years in a row now. How, how do you find those people? Um, you become that people first. The people. You, you become that people. Yeah, you I love that. that people. <laughs> so are you, do you still do like the list? I really truly believe in that. I've been doing that for like a decade too, writing yes. out who am I looking for? All the characteristics. And then God seems to put them in my God life. God will always put those people in your life. So praying out loud to God is like the best way to do it. I'm looking for this person. I want them to have this, this, and that. And I want them to be connected to you. Right. A lot of people will hear that. And I know they're thinking that sounds so simple and it can't be true. Why do people resist that? Like it's, it is that simple though. If you could just believe that yeah. and have certainty around that, then it will come into your life. As humans, we like to overcomplicate everything. We like to overcomplicate, overcomplicate. I can't even Whoa. talk right now. Overcomplicate. I'm, I'm out. I got way it's too the, much energy. It's the Nespresso. Yeah. This is, there's like cocaine in here. Or something. <laughs> um, yeah. We overcomplicate everything. And it's really so simple. So when you do good things, when you help people, when you raise everybody up around you, then those type of people are naturally going to show up yeah. in your life. Mm. I'm living okay. proof of that. We have over 100 people on the team now. And every you could literally sit with every single person and you would experience a similar energy. Mm. I love that. But it starts at the top. It starts with you. So you got to get real clear. And one of the things after working with thousands of women is y'all get to spend more time loving you. That's so important. Yeah. Cause sometimes as women, mm -hmm. I'm talking like I'm a woman now. I hope you don't mind. It's okay. We, as women, we, girl talk. we become uh, martyrs. Oh my and gosh. And we get bitter and then we get upset. I have a beard and I'm a woman. This is weird. <laughs> well, we just follow our, like what we were modeled in the world. Like yes. I know for me, my mom, you know, was a single mom and she always put everybody above herself. Yeah. So that's what I started to do. Like when I became an adult as well. And then I'm like, why am yeah. I unhappy? Why am I suffering? Oh, it's because like I'm living by these illogical rules of yeah. putting other people before my happiness, yeah. you know? And I think we have to start to question like those rules that we follow. 100%. My girlfriend uh, runs a dating and relationship business and she'll be in it all <laughs> oh day my long, gosh. eight, nine hours, just hustling, grinding on the phone with all these women and helping them. And she loves it. She's really good at it. But then I'll notice she'll come in with all this masculine energy. And I'm like, Hey, like we need to, to get you to unwind. Yes. So pouring a bath, having her go that what we would call the transition phase yeah. is absolutely huge. That's very important for a lot of women in business. Yeah. yeah. We need that transition phase. Okay. So they Just have like to- like men. We need that too. You have to practice going into your feminine? Well, because we'll come home all- I'll come home all fiery. Like mm. fired up. And- A little bit too much. There's a little anger to the masculine energy. Yeah. That some women are like, oh, he's hot right now. But it's, it's really natural for men to be in that state. Yeah. So there's a transition phase for us too when we do come home and- Kind of find the medium- yeah. Exactly. Okay. That's good. So I want to get back to the self-love concept yes. though, because a lot of women are going to fight us on that. And what does that even look like? Like to put yourself first. And I think it's important for men to practice this too, yeah. right? It's not just, it's for all of us. Yeah. I know for my like theme this year is radical self-love, like mm. at all costs, radical self-love. I'm glad we're talking about this then. Mm -hmm. So radical self-love um, to me really looks like how you start your day. Okay. So morning ritual. What am I doing to get my mind right? Yours is like a four hour morning ritual. It can be. Yeah. When I wake up super early, 334, it's reading, it's writing, it's meditating, mm -hmm. it's going out, it's looking into the sun, staring into it, right? Most people are like, don't That hurts my eyes sun. thinking about that. You got to get used to it. <laughs> yeah. But I literally- Why it, is that important? It releases so many neurochemicals in your body. 
Oh. And you feel it. I have this little bench in my garden that I go out to do some sun gazing. I know it sounds weird. But uh, there's that. They're all going to be following you on Instagram after this, or they're going to yeah. see. They're like, oh, I understand now. I get yeah. it now. I went over to, um, I went to. Somewhere. I went somewhere. Yeah, I went to this place <laughs> where in France, the south of France. Oh, okay. And all these uh, people were studying scripture and looking at the Bible and doing all this stuff. And one of the practices that they had was actually sun gazing. Okay. So about 50 Ooh, people practices. would wake up every morning. And they would go stare into the sun. I'm going to do it right together. after this. Right after this. I'm going to go stare. You don't want to look into it right now. Is it too right? Too late. Okay. So it's the first 15 minutes of the day. Okay. So talk about that. Like if for mommy millionaires to really own their morning, Yeah. what would be some things? You said writing. I think I learned brain dumping from you. Are you yeah. the person that taught me that? As soon as you wake up, write out everything that's... For, yeah. For women, that's super important. Yeah. That's what I do. Because you have diffused awareness. Okay. So Alison Armstrong talks about that. Have you ever had her on the show? No, but I started following her you because should. of you. <laughs> I'll introduce you guys. Okay. Yeah, she's great. She's like the foremost women coach. Okay. She's badass. Okay. Um, diffused awareness. So you have a lot of pop-ups happening. The computer screen's on and you got like a hundred computer screens. Mm -hmm. Us men, we have like one thing on our mind. Like we have the hunter mind. Right. So for you, it's important to get it all out of you. And if your girlfriends aren't here because you need your girl time. To talk it out. To yeah. talk and do all that. Mm -hmm. Then you'll end up using your man as the girl thinking that he is this woman, this hairless woman, when he is, his <laughs> brain operates completely different. Right. So writing it out is a form of venting, is a form of just getting it out of that brain of mm. yours so that then you feel empty. Okay. Because it's very rare that a woman actually feels that emptiness to where she can be in her full power, in her business, in her life. If she's got a thousand pop-ups in her brain. I, I totally agree. I, so I've been doing this for like yeah. two years and I feel like it's like a game changer. It helps out. Right? Yeah. Even if you were just to do that, I feel like. Yeah. Do that. Okay. So brain dump. What else? So brain dump. Uh, for me, I like music. Okay. Anything that raises my vibration. Anything. Let's talk about music. Cause I feel like some people will think that, oh, well, it's okay if I put on this like dirty yeah. rap music or something, but that's no, no, actually no, no. very low vibe. Yeah. You don't want that. Right. So worship music for me. I love that too. Right? Who's love, your favorite? As far as worship? Yeah. I like Jesus culture. I like, yeah. I like Hillsong. Me too. That's my favorite. Yeah. I love rocking out to that. And I like a lot of the tribal drums and stuff. I got a SoundCloud account and I like bringing some of that music in too. Okay. Puts me in like a focus state. That's awesome. Morning. And I also play the guitar and I, I have a piano at the house now that I'm dabbling with and so taking time to be creative. Why is that? Why does music move you so much? I think it's an expression of your soul, right? Anytime you, you can be in what's called the flow state, mm -hmm. which is where your prefrontal cortex is lighting up, according to like MRIs, you lose track of time. You feel like you're in complete flow. For many women, it's dance. You love to dance, right? Mm -hmm. You love to move your body and shake things out of you, which is really good. But very few women. And that's why I feel like that's why a lot of women listen to rap music, though, yeah. is like for that purpose, because you can like move and then yeah. like you can't listen. I, I love. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm going to say her last name wrong. But Monique, you know what I'm talking about? Back in the day. Yeah, Monique. No, like the, like the one right now that's like very high vibe music. Monique. Can you sing it? Ben no. I, <laughs> I don't know the words or I would. Monique Benavent, she's on YouTube. But it's like very high vibe, like happy music that you can move and dance to. I'll I'll link it up for you guys. Yeah, I want to dance to it. Yeah. TikTok. You gotta get on your TikTok game. <laughs> These dances. Oh my gosh. TikTok. Are you guys on there? Is Organifi on TikTok? No. We were with Shalene Johnson though. Oh. You know yeah. Shalene? yeah. And she was like just sending the praises. She's like, look oh, at my tic TikTok yeah. videos. She was crushing it. It's easy to go viral on TikTok right now. Yeah. Apparently. That's cool. And then you can direct the traffic to your Instagram. So another traffic channel. See? Okay. Yeah. So, um, brain dump. Yeah. We're going to get some sun Yeah. and we're going to listen to music. What else should we be doing in the morning? To I own love, your day? Uh, notes of appreciation. So writing just a few texts to people, maybe sending them a video. If you're a video person, sending that out to at least three people every day. Okay. Will Create a cascade of new energy for you mm -hmm. and ramp up your vibration. Oh my gosh. All right. I love so, it. Notes, uh, fueling your body. So hydrating, super hydrating. That's the, which is the alkaline water, which yes. we talk about. Water with you. lemon. Water with lemon. I drink about 32 ounces of water in the morning. First thing. That hurts my stomach thinking about that. Yeah. It's a so lot. much water. What happens is, is you cleanse your entire lymphatic system. Okay. Which one of the biggest health trends in 2020 is the lymphatic system. I'm just putting that out there. 
And there's only a few ways to do that because the lymphatic is a, a, you know, in your body, you have to move it. It's not like your circulation. Yeah, that's why I do my little facial massage. And I'm, yeah. yeah, your lymphatic facial massage. Mm-hmm. That's like the best. They yeah. use the gusha thing or whatever yep, it's called. Yeah, I have that and my jade roller. Yes. I do this little thing with my fingers. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You got to make a video on that for all the mommy millionaires. I should Show actually. They would love that. I know. Okay. Right? It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so there's that. I jump on a little mini trampoline. I have my little trampoline up here too. Yeah. Yep, so good. Gets me pumped up. That moves the limp. Okay. Limp. The limp. And then uh, yeah, that's how I start the day. Okay. Pretty much. So that is so important. Like being the CEO of your morning, yeah. essentially, will help you be the best CEO in your business. Yeah. Because oftentimes we'll jump into email. Right. We'll be on our phones, on Instagram, on these different things. And that just sets you up for a failure throughout the day. You have mm-hmm. to center yourself mm-hmm. first and foremost. Because when you have you know, five employees, 10 employees, 100 employees, it just continues to be a bigger magnet to pull you away from the true center of you. Mm. So good. Yeah. All right. So we're wrapping up right now. But what is like the number one thing you want to leave Mommy Millionaires? Mill- what is that? What is the number one thing you want <laughs> you want to leave Mommy Millionaires with? Um, yeah, I just, I love the community. I love what you guys are creating. Thank you. I am all about empowerment of Mm -hmm. the feminine and and what's being created in the world today. And I think if I could leave anything, it is just to simply be kinder to Mm -hmm. yourself, right? Because when you show up like that, your kids see that and that's incredible. And then also the world sees that. So just be kind. I love that. Okay. Now that reminded me, you got to ask one more question. Okay. What you got? At Mommy Millionaire Live, you talked about, because you don't have kids yet, but I know you want to have kids. Yeah. And um, I asked a question, like, what would you do to get your kids, like, you know, into personal development or, like, you know. Yeah. Be awake already. Like, (laughs) whatever the word is. And you said to, you would pay them to read books. Yeah. That'd be part of it. Okay. For sure. Give us one other tip. I think uh, I would bring in, like, instructors. Okay. I may homeschool my kids, actually. I'm literally thinking, yeah. I homeschooled Cooper's for kindergarten, yeah. Yeah, and bring in uh, whatever they're interested in. You're going to unschool. Their soul wants to yeah. express. Bring that type of person in. You know that's called unschooling. Unschooling. It's a whole trend. Well, then I'm part of the unschooling trend. Yeah, you ask the kid, what do you want to learn? And yeah. then you, yeah. Well, because you know why school was created in the first place. Why? That's a whole other tangent. <laughs> Okay, we don't have time that's for it. We'll, we'll we'll put a link on it. Yeah. But yeah, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, and you'll be able to. You'll be able yes. to unschool and I'll have give the them time, and I'll bring them into Organifi, and they can learn from my you know people, my C level team. They can shadow at the young age of four and five. Yes, little business bosses. I love that. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much yes. for being Thanks on for the show. On. Where can people find you? Uh, at Drew Canoli on Instagram, Facebook, all across social, and then Organifi with an I. Yeah, uh, we'll link it up. Use the code mommy mm-hmm. and get 15% off. Yay. Okay. Yeah. I loved today's talk. So um, I'm serious, you guys. You know I never plug products or anything, but Organifi is something that I actually drink. I use it every single day. Even my kids love this stuff. And they even have like this little liver detox pill that I love taking. So I want you guys to check it out for real. Use code mommy. And once you do... I want you to tag both me and Drew. Let us know that you're drinking it, what you think about it, and maybe we'll repost you. And if you love this episode, make sure to share it out with those people that you love that can find some benefit from the show today. You guys, thank you so much. All right. So I'm going to buy 10 of your books as well. Oh my gosh. It's called The Habit of Leading Yourself. The Habit of Leading Yourself. Yeah. Which is an amazing book. Yeah. Right? Leave a comment on this <laughs> and the 10 best comments we're actually going to give away. Oh my gosh. That's so, so cool. Thank you. Yeah. And you know what? Why don't we sweeten the deal a little bit too? Let's do it. We're all, all about give, sweetening. We're all about giving. How about we give away five chocolate golds? <gasps> right? Oh my gosh. The okay. Best comments here. All right. So let's go do here, it. Leave a comment and we'll give away five chocolate golds and 10 of your books. I love this. Is that cool? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yay. Okay, Drew is one of my favorite people. He is so 
like filled with knowledge on so many different topics, you guys. And he didn't get there. He didn't just wake up one day and become that person. He had to work every single day on becoming that person. So I want you guys to check out his book, You Be You. And another thing that I want you guys to really think about when you're leaving this podcast is he talked about, you know, the Christ consciousness. And I'm, we're not going to get into that. But what I really want you guys to take away is how can you make sure that you're not making yourself so big in this big world. You're actually so small in this world. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, but really all of the things that you think you're experiencing right now, these struggles in your business, they're there for you to become better and to test your love and to test your faith. And so when you can show up in that way saying, okay, you know what? This is just a moment in time. This is just a stepping stone. How can I experience this right now with more love, with more compassion, and you're gonna have a lot more fun in your life when you're doing so. So I want you to take that away. Another thing, pick up the greens juice, and if you just do anything, you just have that water with lemon in the morning and so much can change. Uh, and make some healthier habits in your life. I know health has been a huge thing, so I want you to make sure to check out my health vlog that I just posted as well. And I love you guys so much. I appreciate every single one of you guys that listen into the show or watch it on YouTube. Uh, the more you guys listen, the more you guys share this type of message, the more people we can help on our mission of helping 1 million women make a million dollars or more a year. So thanks.